In this video, we will talk about local storage. We will explain what local storage is and how it can be used in your CBOTs and indicators. We will present useful examples using local storage and we will explain in detail the different options available to you. One of the main problems when developing CBOTs and indicators was the necessity of providing file access permissions to CBOTs that needed to save information on the user's machine. Requesting elevated permissions from users many times raises concerns and many times users avoid using CBOTs or indicators that require elevated permissions and access to their device. Local storage is a convenient way to save data on a user's computer without requesting such a permission, even if CBOTs and indicators stop or start again, providing a safer alternative for programmers. Let's see an example of how you can use local storage to save data for a CBOT. Let's create a new CBOT and name it local storage example. Each CBOT and indicator has a local storage property that allows you to execute all the read and write operations. In the onStart method we will use a local storage object to save the message parameter. In order to do so, we can use the setString method. The setString method takes two parameters, a key that will allow us to retrieve this information at a later stage and a string with the value to be saved. Now let's retrieve the saved value in the onTick method. We will use the getString method which takes as a parameter the key of the data we want to retrieve and we will print the retrieved value in our log. Let's build the CBOT and let's run it. We can see the retrieved value printed in the log. As a next step, let's comment out the line of code that sets the value, build the CBOT, restart CTrader, and rerun the CBOT. We can see that the value is still printed in the log, showing that the value was saved and is available even after CTrader restarts. Beyond strings, local storage can save any kind of object. Behind the scenes CTrader Automate API serializes and deserializes object information allowing programmers to save any kind of data. We will create a new class that we will use to store information, save it and retrieve it. We will name it Signal. In the onStart method, we will create a new instance of the class and initialize its properties. Let's use the setObject and the getObject methods to save and retrieve the signal.
Let's build the CBOT and run it again. We can see the values printed in the log. One of the important features of local storage is the ability to define the scope in which the saved values are visible. There are three different scopes available. These are instance, type, and device. Instance scope makes saved values available to the specific instance only. Type scope allows multiple instances to share information. Device scope allows information to be shared between CBOTs and indicators even if they are running in different instances of CTrader. We can demonstrate this option with some examples. First, we will modify our existing CBOT and add a Boolean parameter that will indicate if this instance will be writing or reading from the local storage. Then we will explicitly define the storage scope in the setString method. We will add two instances and we will configure the one to write into local storage while the other reads. We will run the two instances together and see that the reading instance cannot see the saved value. Then we will change the first instance to read from local storage and see that it is able to read the saved values. Now that we have explained the instance scope, let's explain the type scope. The type scope allows the exchange of information between instances of the same CBOT. Let's change our set string and get string method scope to type mode. We can repeat the previous experiment and see how the second instance can now read the saved string variable. At last, the device scope allows the exchange of information between different CBOTs. Let's duplicate the CBOT, rename it local storage example 2, build it, add an instance, and repeat the process. We can see that the new CBOT cannot read the stored information saved in type scope. So let's change the code to save and read information to and from the device scope. If you want to share information between several CBOTs, make sure you call flush and reload methods.
We will build the seabots and repeat the process. We can see now how two instances of C Trader can share information between each other using local storage. We hope that you found the video helpful. Feel free to ask any questions at the bottom of this video and subscribe to be updated when we publish a new video.